Hey, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to No Man's Sky Next. So, you finally got your sodium. You can survive on the surface, and that then triggers a point, a waypoint, of where you can go and find your crash ship on the planet's surface. But it's not just as simple as running towards that crash ship. Oh, no, it isn't. What you're going to have to do is pick up materials along the way. And here's some hints on how to do that. First off, deuterium. That's going to give you a jetpack boost. This is quite handy in traversing around the landscape, but be careful you don't fall too far and incur health damage. And it's only a short period of time. You're also going to need sodium. We've covered sodium before, but you're going to need it to keep those systems recharged. And all this while you're heading on towards that ship. You've still got your mining laser. And using that mining laser is going to be invaluable in collecting more materials. The mining laser is attached to your multi-tool. Now, once you've picked up sodium, and you'll get these sodium outcrops, so keep an eye out for them. Look out for ferrite, look out for other materials, but also look out for those sentinels. They're around with what seems to be to protect the planet from... Let's look at interlopers. Let's call it what you are. You're an interloper, according to the alien species in this game, from destroying all the fauna and the natural resources. Also keep an eye on your stamina gauge. Now the stamina gauge is on the bottom right hand side. You're going to have to be running and then slowing down so your stamina recovers and then running again in a sort of like spurting sporadic motion whilst all the time still collecting materials. You're going to need carbon to recharge that mining laser. And don't forget to go and investigate certain drop boxes and supply crates that are littered around the landscape. You're going to get things like rusted metal. That's okay, you can make ferrite dust out of this. You're going to get microchips. You're going to get all sorts of things. You're going to get condensed car carbon. These dehydrogen fragments, great for making starship fuel. Don't forget to go mining all of that. Ferrite as well. You're going to need ferrite, and that goes without saying. All the base materials are going to be there for the taking on the way to the ship. So make sure you take full advantage of all that sodium that you've picked up. And I've shown to do that in prior videos. Now there you go, you can see the ship just over the horizon. And once you get there, by following that waypoint uh, on, your, on your scanner, on your HUD, then it's going to unlock another part of the story, which, you guessed it, it's going to be more material hunting. So if you've only done so, click that like and subscribe button and also look for the notification icon and that'll let you know when I'm putting more videos of No Man's Sky, Elite Dangerous, Subnautica and more on YouTube. Now I've actually reached the ship and that triggers off another bit of story or in-game set piece. It tells me that my suit is all happening and it's all fine and everything's okay with the suit. Brill, we know this. But the ship, the ship is screwed, right? It is absolutely in need of repair. We've got to fix the pulse engines. We've got to fix the takeoff thrusters. And for that, we're going to need, you've guessed it, more materials. But this is very much the nature of the beast. It's what you're expecting from a game like this. But we've been mining ferrite dust. We've been mining carbon. So we're able to create things like nanites, which are required. We've been mining those blue crystals. So we can make dehydrogen jelly. All these items that we've been mining on the way to the ship, which might have seemed a bit random to people, we now need. But time to explore the crash site. We've got some damaged machinery. We're going to need some chromatic metal. But we're not going to be able to build that yet until we can find some copper. There is this navigation beacon. This gives you another little bit of information and story. We're going to broadcast a message. And hey, why not? Traveller anomaly detected. Hey, cool. Fantastic. Right, so, what do we need? We need metallic plates. 
We need ferrite dust. We need carbon. We need nanites. We need all this stuff. We need those blue crystals. Dehydrogenated cum, whatever it is, the blue stuff. That's all the stuff that we need. But most of all, we're going to need ferrite. And we need to have to do it without those sentinels coming down and shooting us. This red stuff coming up from the ground, condensed carbon, real potent stuff. And quite rare, as you can see. Carbon is everywhere. Condensed carbon, few and far between. Now I've attracted the attention of a sentinel. Let's run off in the complete opposite direction. Let's mine some of the blue crystals. Dehydrogen. That'll allow us to make that gel. But it's also, like I said, it's gonna allow us to make rocket fuel or spaceship fuel. And that's something we're gonna need because we now have a spaceship. So this goes without saying. Okay, so mining, 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 mining. Mine a bit of carbon. Some of the stuff we're gonna need advanced mining lasers for. But generally we're here for dehydrogen, carbon, ferrite, and if you can find it, a little bit of sodium. Because we always need a little bit of sodium. So, we're stocking up on all the ferrite dust. Stocking up on carbon. And very shortly it'll be time to get back to the ship and start progressing. But you don't want to be going back and forth, back and forth, because you just haven't got enough materials. Go back, forearmed, forewarned with the materials that you need. So there you go, we got ferrite dust, we've got some oxygen gel, we've got sodium, we've got dehydrogen, we've got nanites. We need pure ferrite, we need a hematic seal as well. Now we've already fit, got this metal plating, that's one part of the pulse engine fixed. Hermetic seals, well, that's the next thing. And we've got no chance of making that yet. We have to go somewhere and go and find it. And to do that, we're gonna need some more information from the life support systems. Now, getting back into the ship, once you've attached that metallic plate, is gonna trigger another piece of story. Now, I found this part of the game a little bit tiresome straight off the bat. I had just been at that particular device and it had offered me nothing. But no, you have to get back into the ship, you've got to trigger the set piece, and then go back all the way over there and get it. Here you go. Navigational data module. Now what are you gonna do with this? I'll tell you what you're gonna do with this. You're gonna build a signal booster. And for that, you're gonna need nanotubes, you're gonna need a metallic plate, and you're gonna need sodium. Well, fortunately for us, we have sodium. We have nanotubes. And a metallic plate, well, if needed, we can just go and get some more ferrite. It's quite literally everywhere, just to try and avoid that sentinel. So, let's get some mining, just enough so we can get get that metallic plate and then we can build that signal booster input the navigational data and then we are away right brilliant metallic plate there you can see it we've now got one absolutely fantastic let's get back over here and there you go we have now built a signal booster now going up and activating this signal booster is going to give you what will become a very familiar screen as you go through the game. Input some navigational data. We got that from the navigational beacon. It's going to give us an option to scan distress frequencies. We're going to scan it. It goes off and does its funky thing. It zooms out. It's quite a nice effect. You can see that pulse effect as it scans the planet's surface. All right, well, you come back down and your head updates and says, right, you need to get yourself right over there as you can see is quite a distance 
So it's going to be a fair old trot. We're going to go mining on the way just to get some additional items because who knows what you're going to need once you get over there. All the dehydrogen. You know, you might as well. Keeping an eye on the radiation levels as well. So if you come across sodium, make sure you pick up some sodium. Now, every starting planet is generally going to be different. You're going to have radiation. It's going to be heat. It's going to be cold. It's going to be toxicity. But generally, the set piece of getting to your ship is what everybody calls, you know, the in-game training. It's getting you familiar with the mining aspects, with navigating, with using the beacon, with finding items, using your scanner, avoiding those sentinels. That's, this is effectively what we're doing. This is, right, okay, we're gonna give you, here's the training wheels, and then once you get up off the planet, training wheels come off, you're on your own. Go and roam free, my children, is what it's gonna be saying. Now, Here's an important thing. You can see the red growths over there, just past that tree. These are oxygen. And you're gonna need this because you're a spaceman wearing a spacesuit on a planet. So don't forget to pick up the oxygen. And that's quite a strange aspect to get your head around, isn't it? Picking up oxygen. These plants are rich in oxygen, okay? Pick them up, make sure you've got a store. And as you can see, I need to get some, put some oxygen into the suit anyway. Clicking on the heart in the exosuit is going to allow me to recharge the oxygen. You can see it down there, second row to the left. But we're okay for the time being, so we're going to try and conserve all these resources because they're not they're not infinite resources; they're finite resources. Now I'm in the middle of a storm that is draining my hazmat protection on my suit. But I'm going to keep on running. Uh, I'm not going to die, not you think, but what you can do is you can find shelter in a cave should you come across one, or a hole in the ground should you come across that. Me, I'm just deciding I'm going to leg it, I'm going to leg it for this, this settlement, and over there I'm going to get my hematic seal, once I've got my hematic seal I'm going to hightail it all the way back over to the ship, I'm going to fix the ship, tick in the box, I have fixed my ship. A little bit of mining as well, the storm is starting to subside. This dehydrogen stuff, you know, it's invaluable because you don't want to be stopping for spaceship fuel and running out. I mean, how embarrassing is that to run out of spaceship fuel? Right, some of the life forms. Just tend to get in the way. I've got a bit of a jetpack boost there, which is wearing off, so I've got to get back to the gown pretty quick. A little bit of damage. Going to recharge the hazmat with some sodium, and we're going to recharge the oxygen with, you guessed it, some oxygen. And I've picked that up, so it is literally lying around on the ground. Now, I've activated my scanner. That's picked up a few items that I can pick up. Sodium plant. This sort of like material housekeeping, you know, is, is quite invaluable. And once you've got the scanner, it's quite easier. More deuterium for a jetpack boost. And here I am. I'm at the distress beacon's location. And here I'm gonna find my uh, hematic seal. A little bit of mining now. I got a thing for that dehydrogen. I really have. In previous games, I've run out of fuel, and that's been, like I said, so embarrassing. It's been a right pain in the ass. So here we go. We're going to go into this this habitation module. I'm going to search that. I've got a little bit of salt from that plant. But I'm going to look at this, this hollow archive, and it tells me logs are corrupted. There's a garbled message. They've left something behind in the fabricator. He's fallen on hard times. His visor's damaged. He can't find his ship. I've recovered the supplies, and there you go. It spits out supplies, and I've got a hermetic seal. That's exactly what I need to fix my ship. Now, with these areas, it's always worthwhile checking around all the modules. 
check around all the modules, you might find things like nanites, you might find um, modules that will give you words to the alien language. So it's worthwhile spending a little bit of time and having a good look around. Now some are just shelters, perhaps for vehicles. You'll find some damaged machinery, but generally, unless you've gone and built the refinery, you're not going to be able to fix that. It's worthwhile noting where the where, where this location is and then coming back with some chromatic metal or whatever it's required to fix that module, coming back and fixing it and then reaping whatever bounty it intends to give you. So there you go. We've done a scan. And you'll soon quickly find that you've been turned around and you've got no idea where your ship is. So what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what you've got to do. You've got to build an analysis visor. This analysis visor, once activated, will allow you to find your ship, amongst other things and other points of interest. So here we go, into the multi-tool, down to install technology. There's the yellow item there, you see. Analysis visor, carbon nanotubes, no problem because we've got loads of carbon. To the exosuit, spare slot, carbon nanotubes, no dramas there. Into the multi tool, install technology, there you go. And now, on the PC, by pressing F, you can then activate the visor and then get a bead on where your ship is. Now, you know, it's going to be a fair old trot to get all the way back there. And that's fine. However, you're going to do some mining on the way to make it worthwhile that when you get back to the ship, you're ready to go. So here we go. We're getting back to our initial camp where the ship is. And we've got a hermetic seal. So we're going to get that installed straight away. Boom. Pulse engine part. Thank you very much. Repaired. Now, what can we do here? Well, we can't refuel it because we haven't got any of the fuel necessary to repair the pulse engine. However, we can do some repair to the liftoff thrusters because all we need to do now is get some pure ferrite and some dehydrin jelly. Well, dehydrin jelly, we can make that quite easily because we've been mining all the blue crystals that come up from the ground, right? So there you go, we've got that. This is what we need here. We need a refinery. And a refinery is gonna require, you guessed it, a good old metal plate, amongst other things. Car you know, oxygen and metal plating. Well, we've got oxygen, so we picked up those red plants, if you remember, that looked a bit like a bell end. So we've picked those up, so we've got oxygen. Pure ferrite is gonna be fuel the takeoff thrusters. We're going to put some items into the end point and you can see by fueling it up with carbon you will get ferrite out. Ferrite dust in, pure ferrite out. Rusted materials in, ferrite dust out. Put ferrite dust back in, pure ferrite comes out. So it's worthwhile now going off doing a bit of extra mining and getting some additional ferrite. Now, for those of you who might find this a little bit grinding, and do you know what? Sometimes it is. As you go out looking for more, I wouldn't say exotic materials, even things, things like copper, you know, oh my God, is there a quicker way of doing this or what? And there may well be as you progress in the game. But at this stage of the game, I think it's okay, you know, it's not too laborious to go out and get these materials. So, as you can see, the light has gone green on my portable refinery. Into maintenance. Thank you very much. Modify us, get some more stuff in there. Let's take that stuff out and we'll begin. So we can go off and do something less boring instead while it's making more pure ferrite. So, here we go. We're in the ship. We haven't got to be in the ship, but I like sitting in the ship. And we've got enough to make a little bit of fuel. At least to get us off the planet. Pure 
pure ferrite. Launch thruster. Repaired. Brilliant. There it is. It's got a bit of fuel. Now we can build some starship fuel canisters. Now normally you can you can mine some, some stuff for starship fuel. But building the fuel canisters is great. If you don't want to build fuel canisters, you're going to have to go looking out for uranium. Right? Um, and that's usually attached to ferrite, I have found. Okay? But by scanning items as well around the area, like plants and, you know, the indigenous species, uh, other, other items, rocks, you're also going to build up your credit store as well. So credits, as we get on in the game, are going to be very important. That's what's going to allow you to go out and buy additional items. So we're going to do a bit of extra mining. Get some oxygen, get some carbon. Head on back to the old ship. And we're going to make some spaceship fuel. So, metal plate, fantastic. We'll have one of those. There you go, starship fuel, bang. And then when you click on your launch thrusters, you can select Starship Fuel. And that then recharges that particular part of the ship. Easy. Or fairly easy. The refiner is going to be a quintessential tool that you're going to need throughout this game. So don't forget that when you want to leave or go somewhere else, you take that and your scanner with you. Because on more than one occasion, I've set up a quintessential base somewhere and I've left it there and then I've got completely turned around and I've been unable to find it. I've gone outside of the range of, of the, um, the visor. You know, the, anal the analysis visor is great, but it has got a limited range, I think. So there you have it. That has been getting to your ship in No Man's Sky. That has been some mining in No Man's Sky. We've built the signal booster as well. We've built the No Man's Sky portable refinery and we've refined pure ferrite. We've repaired the launch thrusters. We've repaired the pulse drives. All that in one video, everybody. And that is virtually the end or the beginning of the end, as it were, for the tutorial part of No Man's Sky. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Do me a favour, like and subscribe, and check out for more videos in this series.